Hello everyone, and welcome to the last video that you have watched. Today, we're going to be building a Game Boy Macro. Let's get into it. So the Game Boy Macro is essentially a DS Lite where the top screen has been removed. Yeah, that's all it is. <laughs> this mod has actually been around for bloody ages. It's something that people did to the original PHAT DS when the hinge inevitably snaps because it's incredibly weak plastic. So it was sort of utilizing a broken, damaged console and repurposing it into something else. Now, obviously, the Game Boy Advance SP AGS-101s are very expensive. They are the best way to play Game Boy Advance games with absolutely zero mods required that is official Nintendo stuff. Obviously, there's a million different things out there now. But back then, that was the best way to play them. Now, even back when, you know, before all these IPS screens and Game Boy Advance mods and everything were out, the AGS 101s were still more highly desirable because of that backlit screen with far better, uh, richer colours and uh, obviously a backlight as opposed to a front light. So what people would do is utilize the function of the DS Lite and the original DS that it plays your original Game Boy Advance games on a backlit screen with a rechargeable battery. It was essentially the best way that people were able to play their Game Boy Advance games. Now it can be done solderless. In fact, I did this back in 2016 for a friend of mine. I did put up a community post saying I'm gonna do this before anyone else makes a video about it and it becomes old news. That was sarcasm, but a lot of people missed that. I'll make a note not to do that too often. Um, but before that, I actually did that myself for my own console many, many years before that. That was like my first ever mod that I ever did. Obviously, it's not going to look as pretty. Uh, it's also not going to have any sound at all. Uh, it also won't have any other functionality than just playing Game Boy Advance games. So essentially what you do is you just go into your DS uh, settings, you turn on the auto play when you turn on your DS, and then you plug in a Game Boy Advance game, turn it on, it skips all the menus and gets straight into the game, which makes the top screen completely redundant. So you can just rip it off at that point. Honestly, you can just rip it off. You might damage the plastic, but there we go. You got yourself a DS macro. But today, I'm going to try and have a go at making a slightly more polished version. Now, I'm not an expert at body filling, sanding, spray painting, or case modifications whatsoever. So please uh, give me a little bit of slack. I also am aware that there is a million other things that people do. There's aluminium faceplate replacements, which means you don't have to do any work to the actual case itself. You can do light tube mods and you can also have stereo sound and there's a million different things that people do. Glass lenses and all the rest of it. I am aware of all of those things. I am fairly well read in this subject area. It may be a surprise to some of you. But anyway, let's get into it. So for this mod, you might need a DS. I used a broken one to try and keep those sorts of people happier. The first thing to do is take it apart. Once it's apart, you'll need to remove the stylus holder and the cartridge shield. Then take a Dremel <clears throat> and remove this hinge cover. Once it's nice and flush, cover up all of the holes with some masking tape that we need to fill. For the next step, I advise a face mask and copious amounts of Febreze, because it is bloody smelly. Mix up some body filler and get filling, yo. <laughs> oh dear. After clearly applying way too much body filler, I knocked off three years from my life expectancy by sanding it all down.
Now for some primer. Once I applied a few coats, a few scratches and imperfections showed, so I filled them and painted again. Show off. Now it's time to wrestle the DS cart slot off, because for some reason, we won't be needing this. Some people use it for an R4 card, I am not one of those people. Once that's removed, take a 330 ohm, <laughs> bloody hell that's tiny, and solder it into place. I followed a guide which I will link below. I'll be using a speaker which I've taken from the top of the DS. Strip the wires and solder to the speaker point and the ground on the headphone jack. I stuck the speaker down and reassembled. And, well, there you go. It's, uh, it's all right. I mean, it's, uh, it's, um, yeah, it's still at the bottom of a DS light. <laughs> Honestly, no matter what you do to this thing, it still just looks like the bottom of a DS light. I, I cannot ever get that out of my head. I mean, it still looks fairly cool. Don't get me wrong, like I'm not, I'm not taking the mick out of all of these uh, DS macros because some people do do some really, really cool stuff. I think it makes a difference if you add custom paint jobs and glass screen lenses and all the rest of it, but this is a pretty primitive version with very little skill required. It took me around three days to do, including all the paint drying time and all the rest of it. Uh, and it was also around sort of 40 pounds. I had to get the body filler and also these 330 ohm uh, resistor things. I also didn't have any wet and dry sandpaper, which is why there's a few scratches on it. Lockdown was actually partially lifted at the end of last week. So I was able to get to the shop and buy some wet and dry sandpaper. But before that, I was using like 60 grit. <laughs> completely the wrong stuff but yeah I mean it has turned out pretty good there's still you know a few little blemishes around the edges down here there's a little bit of a uh, of sort of a lifted area which probably could have done with a bit more work um, up here there's one or two scratches I also got a little bit too rough and ready sanding this down so it's not completely flush on the back there's a few little scratches down here but besides that it's Fairly good. I, w I would say that this is a pretty good first attempt at a uh, proper DS macro. Now I have seen some people centering these buttons. Um, I don't think that's going to be too difficult to do because it is obviously just some metal contacts down there. So you could just put some like copper tape or something and just bridge the A and B contacts. I don't know how people are doing that, but I don't have a Dremel, which is why you may notice there's no LED holes and there's no speaker holes. I know. Pretty wild. Why would I put this out there if I couldn't finish it off? Well, actually, someone has bought me a Dremel. I'll put his name up here because I've forgotten it. This is terrible. But thank you very much to you, sir. I think it was Thomas. Was it Thomas? I don't know. <laughs> I will be able to finish this off at a later stage and I'll put a photo up on my Facebook page, but it's really not going to look too different to this. It's just going to have a few more holes cut in it. But hopefully, you still like it. Uh, I just cannot get over the fact that it's just a DS light, just the bottom of a DS light. I will never unsee that. But it is a very nice way to play your Game Boy Advance games. So if you want to play a Game Boy Advance game, you take it, you plug it in, you turn it on. You have your little uh, touchscreen area thing here. You've got your volume slider on the bottom, obviously. You still have access to PictoChat. It hasn't got the antenna anymore. You could probably put that in there. So I don't think this is going to work. Um, but it's there anyway if you want to do some doodles when you're bored. It's also got... DS download play, fat lot of good that's going to be, but you have got, you know, your screen brightness functionality down here. Now, some people actually put glass screen lenses in here, which involves just taking off the digitizer. That's not going to make it 
touchscreen anymore, but you can navigate everything just with your D-pad. So you have access to your clock and your settings and all the rest of it. So if we just go in and press start GBA game, you will see it just plays your Game Boy Advance games. And the speaker does work, it's just very, very quiet. So there we go, we're into our Game Boy Advance game, which is actually a cartridge that my friend John made me with loads of like random pictures of uh, me just on it on every single different button press. So thanks John for that. I haven't put it in a video yet and I've had it for about a year, so <laughs> thank you very much. But another thing that a lot of people do is pick up one of these. This is the Easy Flash. Now, big thank you to the guys over at Retro Modding for sending me this. I've had it for a while and I haven't done anything with it. What's quite cool about this, oh, I haven't got a screwdriver. What's quite cool about this is it comes with a replacement doohickey that allows you to uh, not have the sort of chin bit sticking out. So if you want to use this on the Game Boy Advance, you can, but if you want to use it on your DS Macro, all you do is get rid of this little bit and put this thing on, like so. And then you take your micro SD card and you slide that in, that didn't go in very nicely. And all of a sudden you've got this completely flush game in here, which should hopefully be loaded with a bunch of Game Boy games. I don't know what's on that SD card, but we'll soon find out. But there we go, Sonic Advance 3, let's play that. Boom. I know it's really quiet, that's just because there's no holes for the sound to travel out, but as I said, I will sort that out off camera. And also the LEDs are still mounted on the motherboard up here, so all I've got to do is just drill a hole for that and maybe put like a little light tube in so that there's three LEDs on there. There's an orange, a red, and a green to show the different sort of power status. So if I just put one piece of acrylic tube in there to cover all three, then that will uh, obviously make all three of them still functional. Now, let's quickly talk about this whilst we're playing a little bit of Sonic. I don't think this is necessary. Now, just because I don't think it's necessary doesn't mean that people shouldn't do it because if you have a broken top screen, it's a fairly good way to sort of recycle your DS. Now, there is obviously the argument that you can just replace the top screen for fairly cheap, and that is true, but if you really don't have any interest playing DS games and you just want a dedicated Game Boy sort of handheld system and you don't want to spend $200 on the uh, modded Game Boy advances that people are making, then this is a pretty fun project, and I think fun is the, the key word in that because it is quite fun. I don't necessarily think that everything has to have a point because if it's enjoyable, and the person has enjoyed making it, then that is the point of it. But yeah, I mean, it's a really nice thing. Rechargeable battery, thin, uh, nice form factor. It's obviously nicer to uh, to hold than the Game Boy Advance SP. Um, really nice, vibrant screen colors. Not a lot of soldering, and obviously it's far, far cheaper to do than a Game Boy Advance or something like that. But you guys should let me know in the comments section below what you think. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who has watched and subscribed recently. We've had an influx of new people on the channel, so welcome to all of those people. And uh, yeah, that is going to wrap up this video for the Game Boy Macro. I can finally tick this one off the list because a lot of people have been asking for it. So my final conclusion, I like it. I just don't think it's necessary. Thanks for watching. Bye. Hi folks, Ashens here. Now, I've got a much easier and more refined method for creating a Game Boy Macro. Okay, get your uh, DS Lite and take a piece of black cardboard, much like this one, and just rest it on there. And there we are. You've now got a single screen capable of playing a Game Boy Advance game, and you haven't had to carve anything up, do any difficult work, or more to the point, ruin a DS Lite in order to make an ugly piece of crap. And there we are. You can just plug your Game Boy... Oh no, it's a DSi!